Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at Prattsburgh Central School, Prattsburgh, New York, 28th of November, 2006, approximately 1.30 p.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Alan Bruce Combs. Uh, I was born uh, February 15th, 1926, at um, Garwoods, New York, town of Burns, uh, in Allegheny County. Okay. What was your educational background prior to entering service? I, uh, I quit school in my senior year and went into the Navy. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Uh, not really. We didn't have a radio. We didn't have TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at that particular time, I, no, I don't know. Do you remember how you felt when you did hear about it at all? Or? Uh, well, if I had been old enough, I would have joined up then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you enlisted? Uh, no, I uh, I went to Buffalo in January before I was 18 in February uh, to enlist in the Navy. I had an older brother in the Navy and um, they told me that I was too near 18, I'd have to wait to be drafted. And uh, I've told that story many times and nobody can believe it. So then I went over to the um, Coast Guard. Uh, I thought I'd enlist in the Coast Guard, and uh, they told me the same thing. So I don't know. <laughs> so you were drafted. So I uh, so I went home and and uh, waited until I was drafted in April. And you were drafted into the Navy, or well, were they were you allowed to pick your I, branch? Uh, when we we had our physical. And uh, the Army and the Navy and the Marines were sitting there and the, uh, the Army uh, fellow had his stamp and he was already stamped and I pulled the paper up from under him. And I said, I don't want to go in the Army. I said, I want to go in the Navy. I said, I have an older brother in the Navy and he says that's the place to go. And uh, so the... Uh, the Navy uh, uh, um, pulled the, the paper over and stamped it. So that's how I got in the Navy. All right. Um, where uh, where did you go for your basic? In uh, Samson, over uh, um, between Geneva and Romney, what's over on Seneca Lake. Now, you went there in 44, so it must have been pretty well um, I, um, developed by then. I uh, came, yes. Um, I came home on boot leave June 6, which was D Day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, probably, um, well, this is some of God's work that, uh, that I didn't go in before. Uh, uh, I don't know if I should say it. Uh, I've been thankful. Many times uh, uh, over the years as I've gotten older that I'm thankful that I didn't, that I didn't have to kill anybody. Mm -hmm. but somebody had to do it. Mm -hmm. Now your brother, where, where did he serve? He, he was in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a uh, sound one and uh, he was credited with sinking the last German sub. Oh. It was uh, two days after the war was actually over with Germany, but uh, the sub wouldn't give up. And uh, it was either us or them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they sunk them. They were, uh, I think, eight miles off of the coast of uh, Cape Cod which is pretty close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how long were you in Samson? 
I believe I was in Samson uh, eight weeks. Okay. I went in the April 23rd and got out in June, or came home, uh, I believe, June uh, 6th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when you returned after your leave, where did they assign you? I was uh, I was there for a week, and then I went to um, uh, Foley, Alabama, which is halfway between uh, Pensacola and Mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, uh, I think, I don't remember, six or eight airfields in the Pensacola area. And, um, Barron Field, Foley, Alabama, was one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you do there? Uh, there, the the purpose of the uh, of the the whole Pensacola area, all of the airstrips, was to train uh, naval pilots. And uh, once we, once you were assigned to one of those airstrips. Uh, you spent two years there before you could leave. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing that I signed up for, Cooks and Bakers School. Uh, that lasted about a week and, and uh, spent all day uh, making dough for bread. And, and uh, that was pretty boring. So I transferred out of there and um, then most of my time I spent uh, as a plane captain. Uh, the plane captain's job was to uh, inspect the planes. Uh, we were assigned uh, so many planes and then um, uh, we had to inspect those, make sure that everything was uh, safe and operable. Uh, gas them up and keep them clean, mm -hmm. check the oil. And now did you inspect each one after every single flight or before yes. the flight or how well, did you before, do that? We inspected them when they, when they came in, mm -hmm. uh, just a, a quick going over, but before they uh, went out we had to give them a, a good inspection. Now did you, did you have a whole crew that worked with you or? Yes. yes. How many in your crew? Um, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. There were a number of planes there. Most of the time I worked with uh, SNJs, uh, which is a tail dragger. And, uh, what do you mean by a tail dragger? Uh, you've got uh, your two wheels in front and then one okay. one in the back and then the, and the tail actually mm -hmm. drags. Mm -hmm. Did you go through a mechanics school or a maintenance school? No, we went to um, uh, plane captain school. Okay. So we weren't mechanics. If there was anything that was wrong, uh, then they went into the uh, hangars and um, okay. the uh, mechanics took care of that. How so long you, was that school? Do you recall? Um, about a week. Oh, okay. So you were like a troubleshooter then? you. Looked for right problems just, and then just to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, that everything was operable and so that it was the plane was safe to uh, fly. We also uh, we uh, we didn't use it, but we had to learn uh, all of the different types of planes, American planes. German planes, Japanese planes, so that we could identify them, but uh, uh, we didn't, there at uh, in, uh, Foley, we didn't use those uh, because we only had, uh, well, there were a few, uh, I think it was F4U Corsair, uh, but uh, most of them were the SNJs and uh, the uh, PBYs. Mm -hmm. uh, the PBY is a uh, seaplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, when the, um, and I worked on that 
uh, for a period of time. Um, that was a, a large plane that had a capacity of uh, 10, 10 people. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to fly in any of them? No, no I didn't. Did you ever have a desire yeah. to? Or? Pardon? Did you ever have a desire? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have taken, taken flying lessons since I got out, oh. but uh, uh, I always wanted to go up, uh, but I never really had the opportunity if you, uh, uh, it would have meant pay because uh, if a person went up and went five miles outside the uh, U.S. limits, then you would get uh, overseas pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and some of them did that, but uh, I never had the opportunity, mm -hmm. so it didn't happen. Now, in your uh, form that you filled out, you said that in the Navy you were known as a sand crab. What do you mean by that? Um, well, we never, of course, in Foley, Alabama, uh, that had uh, actually the best beach in Florida. Uh, it's up in the Panhandle, but it had a beautiful beach, and uh, today it is a city. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, uh, Foley, uh, Alabama, was uh, had open grazing, and if you were on the highway and a, and a cow came across the road, you had to stop and let that cow cross. Mm -hmm. That's how far back in the, <laughs> in, the, in the woods we were, but. Uh, the beach was a, was a beautiful beach, mm -hmm. beautiful white sand. And uh, anyone in the Navy that uh, that was uh, spent their time uh, on land and didn't go to out to sea was known as a sand crab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, what were your officers like? that you worked under? Uh, never, uh, never had the opportunity to, uh, to uh, uh, have any contact with the um, higher ups. Um, after I got out of uh, Samson, uh, when I was when I went back to Samson after um, my boot leave, I worked for a week in the chief's quarters. And um, they had, the uh, chief is uh, the uh, highest non-commissioned officer in the Navy. And um, so they, they had special quarters and, and so I was actually a, a waiter that I had three chiefs that I waited on under beck and call. <laughs> now what kind of facility does you live in uh, on the base? In, uh, in, in uh, Alabama, well then after the war was over, uh, completely over. Uh, they closed uh, Barron Field, and I went over to Pensacola, mm -hmm. Mainside. And uh, over over there, the uh, the uh, barracks were brick, but uh, in Foley they were wood. Uh, some of those uh, uh, wooden structures they were just thrown together. But, uh, of course, in, in uh, Florida, uh, except for uh, two months out of the year, it was, it was pretty hot anyway. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have air conditioning. But in the wintertime, it was cold. Uh, you could put on all the clothes you could find. And, and uh, going out, standing watch at night, uh, it was still cold. The, uh, the local kids would run around with uh, mittens and, and, uh, and uh, ear flappers on and uh, barefooted. 
<laughs> now you mentioned here one of the things that uh, you remember most were the uh, USO shows. What were some of the shows that you, were there any name shows that you saw, any name uh, not stars? Really, not really, uh, but they were, of course they were, uh, they were good uh, mm -hmm. because it was a break. Uh, but it was uh, it was mandatory that that you went uh, to those USO shows. But uh, also in town, where um, in in Foley, off base, they had uh, square dancing there two nights a week, and the uh, local girls would come in. Uh, but they were pretty. They were pretty strict with those uh, girls. Uh, uh, you you couldn't go outside with them at all. You had to stay inside, which was which was good. Um, there was one girl that I danced with uh, most of the time. Uh, I've I've looked at her. And I, in fact, I, before this interview, I was looking at some of my pictures, and I had a picture of her. She told me that she was 13. And she was fully as big as I was, and I, I look at that picture and I know well enough that she was. Uh, she gave me a picture in which was probably her high school, but I'm sure that she was just saying that just for her own protection. Mm -hmm. Did you go off base much, or did you stay in base? Yes, yeah, we went out um, uh, weekends. And, How'd you find being Northerners? Were you pretty much accepted? Uh, yes, uh, never, never had a problem. Never had a problem with that. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, uh, people said that I never knew until the war that uh, Dame Yankee was just one word. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, one of my best buddies was uh, was from Mississippi, and uh, uh, I have felt bad that I never, uh, I don't have any idea the, the, the guys that we hung around with, uh, uh, I don't know their first name, where the, uh, <laughs> their address, can't look them up or anything. So you just wrecked one of my questions. <laughs> I was going to ask you about if you kept in contact. <laughs> yeah, 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 there was one. There was one man there that uh, uh, was from Hornell. I was from Canasarega, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we worked together. Uh, we lived in separate uh, barracks, so I only saw him at work, but. Uh, uh, we had a connection because we knew where, right. where we were both from, mm -hmm. and uh, he did look me up once after I got out. Uh, a number of years later, I tried to find him, and uh, uh, nobody seemed to know. Uh, and he told me that his father was the chief of police in Ornell, and. Uh, I thought that uh, that that would help me find him, but uh, nobody seemed to know him. And uh, then I saw his obituary in the paper. Uh, he lived in Canisteo, hmm. which isn't very far away. And uh, I felt bad that I never had the opportunity to look him up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> once uh, you stayed at Pensacola, then after the war ended? Uh, yes, until June. Mm -hmm. Until June, and then my time came up. Okay. Um, did you ever uh, make use of the GI Bill after you left service? Uh, I used it um, a couple times. Uh, when I first got out, uh, I got home on Friday. Uh, I got home on Thursday, um, and Friday I went looking for a job, and uh, so I found a job in a in a carpet factory, 
I was supposed to go to work on Monday, and um, my younger brother came home and, and he said, uh, Monday morning you're going to be in Cornell. And uh, I said, oh, and he said, yeah. Well, he was a uh, DHIA supervisor. And uh, that was a uh, six weeks course at uh, Cornell University. And um, what a DHIA supervisor does uh, is uh, he goes to the dairy farm at night, weighs and samples each cow's milk, and then does the same thing in the morning. And uh, so you have a composite sample and then you uh, run that sample to um, determine the butterfat content. And, uh, and then uh, figure the, um, the uh, amount of milk that the cow gives during her lactation period. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you weigh the uh, feed and weigh the uh, hay that, that she gets and silage and determine what amount of... Uh, of um, concentrate feed she needs to uh, maintain her milk. Mm -hmm. Did you ever use the 5220 club? No, mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. That was uh, $20 a week for 52 weeks. It was kind of an unemployment after you, oh. Oh, after yeah, you got right. it. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, never used it. Okay. Never used it. Do you join any veterans organizations? Yes, I, in fact, I'm treasurer of the Legion here in the Crossford. Okay. Um, and I, I, the question I was going to ask about your, if you kept contact with anyone, um, how do you think your time in the service changed or had an effect on your life? Oh, uh, immensely. In what ways? Uh, well, I grew up. Uh, of course, my, uh, my mother died when I was uh, seven. And, uh, I had uh, a sister, an older sister, and um, two brothers. So after uh, my sister went to college, and it was just my father and, and us three boys. And uh, so us, us boys took uh, turns doing the, the housework for a week. And uh, so uh, I didn't have a mother to uh, wait on me, uh, but I, uh, I have said many, many, many times that, that every boy, and I still say it, every boy should go in service for two years. Uh, they grow up, they get away from their mother, no offense. <laughs> and uh, they learn to take orders. They have, they learn respect. They learn respect for their, uh, for their fellow man and, and uh, learn to look out for somebody besides themselves. Uh, and I still say it. Uh, whether it's wartime or whether it's peace. I, and, uh, of course, we pray for peace every day. It doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, why you, if you hold the photographs up, you know, kind of just like this in front of you, um, Wayne can focus on them and you, you can talk, maybe you show where you are in it and tell where, when that was taken. Well, this, this is my um, boot camp picture and I am the uh, the third one down on the uh, right hand end so that's me right there somebody was always hollering out hey you with the white hat <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, the so that was that mid was 1944 okay. then when you were right in. okay yes all right you got a few more there. Yeah. 
this picture mm -hmm. here is before. This was when I first went in service. This picture is after. Huh. <laughs> after about 60 years. This was taken uh, last year. Now that year it's your original uniform. Well, it's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you still fit into your original yes. uniform. Yeah. Okay. This is a picture, I don't know, you probably can't see no, it. He no, he can. He can focus right in on it. Um, but this is, uh, th this is typical. Um, this is a picture that I took off the wall. Up, took this picture of a picture. It was on the wall in the uh, Samson Museum. And it says uh, exactly what they, what they all said to us when we first went in. You'll be sorry. <laughs> now, did you take a train to Samson from here, or no, how we, did you get there? Uh, we took a. Um, uh, I was inducted in um, Buffalo. Oh, that's for Then we took a bus from there. Oh, okay. And uh, these are some pictures of um, PBYs um, when the um, when the planes went out into the water, we had to take the wheels off, and uh, of course the, uh, the wheels would float, but then the, 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 the part that, that held them wouldn't, mm -hmm. and uh, so they were a little bit heavy. Uh, there's another one. They were a large plane. They used them for reconnaissance mainly. Mm -hmm. Now is that you in the photograph? Uh, this one here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, uh, I took that one uh, mainly uh, for the, uh, so you can see uh, uh, the size of the plane. They are a large plane. Uh, they, uh, they had two, um, two gunners in the back. Okay. Are there any other stories you wanted to mention, or anything else? Um, well, the only, I guess the only thing that I didn't mention was uh, uh, my brother was, uh, was on a uh, DE, and uh, he was always telling me uh, stories uh, about his life in the Navy and uh, his travels on sea and, and uh, I didn't think that I was accomplishing anything uh, but uh, I have, as I've gotten older I realized well I did, I did my job, I did mm -hmm. what I was, mm -hmm. what I was uh, trained to do. Uh, I kept out of the brig, and uh, I'd never been in a brig until I went to Samson <laughs> uh, to, and turned it into a museum. But I did, uh, my brother uh, came down to see me on one of his leaves. He was uh, stationed in uh, Jacksonville, for, or I guess the, uh, his ship came into Jacksonville. And, uh, so he came down to see me, and um, uh, he was telling me how boring a life I had, and I agreed with him. I signed up for sub duty, uh, but um, by the time I had my two years in, the war was over, and I had my uh, numbers uh, or enough points so that I could go home, and so that's what I. Elected to do, I didn't. I didn't re-up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview.